Hey guys, how are we doing? I'm finally back on the Shield Hero Cut content videos. Um, I didn't want to be doing like three different video series from Annie News at the same time, so I've waited until all the Fate ones are done. They were great, loved them, they were awesome. As the Overlord ones come out, I'll still be doing those. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing the Cut content ones. I'm not doing episode four, even though I've seen it's been re-uploaded. Um, it's just because I've done five, and I don't want to be going back, and then all the uploads looking out of place. So I do apologise. But uh, I've gone from 6 onwards, so let's do this. This is Shield Hero Cut Content 6, and I've still yet to finish the anime. The last episode's up and I've not watched it yet, so don't... Nothing down there, I'll finish that over the weekend. In today's Shield Hero Cut Content, we're going to cover episodes 11 and 12. All right. Where this time we'll look more into the second wave, and highlight some of the key moments that the anime skipped regarding the fight between Glass and Naofumi. So, so cool. let's begin. Episode 11, Catastrophe Returns. Covering Volume 3, Chapters 10 to 12 from the Light Novel, three and chapters. chapters 16 and 17 from the Manga. We jump to moments before the next wave is about to start, mm -hmm. but before we even get to the opening scenes in the anime, there was first some moments of planning that wasn't shown. Now, Fumi was basically discussing everyone's roles in the upcoming battle. Right. The highest priority for everyone was to protect any bystanders. So, the soldiers that joined his party so cool. were to meet up with the other soldiers from the kingdom and assist them in their defense efforts of the surrounding villages. Okay. Philo was in charge of quickly dispatching any approaching monsters, oh, of course she and was. Raftalia was to assist with the evacuation efforts. Now, that was a pretty solid plan. However, turns but... out that this time around, there wouldn't be any additional foot soldiers. For some reason, soldiers like the ones who joined Naofumi's party weren't allowed to take part during the wave. What? Which was rather strange, but... Now, Fumi assumed that it was because the higher-ranked people wanted to prevent the lower ranks from getting stronger. Regardless mm. of the reason, though, they had to make do. Always poo out the Which brings like us now to the that. opening scenes outside of the weapon shop. The jade bracelet that now Fumi gives to Raftalia has the attribute known as Magic Up, which improves her ability to generate mana. Makes it's sense. an accessory <laughs> that's intended to balance out the magic that her armor uses. Because, remember... Her new set of armor uses her own magic to detect her enemy's magic levels, and it increases her defenses proportionally. Philo's amber hairpin, Aww, on the other hand, so as identified in the anime, bears the attribute of agility or dexterity up. Cool. Now, although she looked quite happy in the anime, she was actually described to be very hesitant, perhaps oh. even nervous, because this was her first wave and she had no idea what to expect. Well, that makes sense. Now, Fumi saw this unusual change in her character. So he reassures her and tells her that she shouldn't worry because they'll face each problem together. And I wonder team, why they cut stuff like that. Oh, it's the time character finally building came that. for them to be transported, and the first thing that now Fumi spots upon reaching the wave site are the three heroes charging straight to the areas where the monsters are spawning, likely to be the area of the boss. Mm. But there weren't any soldiers alongside them, and there weren't any protecting the villages either. It was also pretty clear that the other heroes certainly weren't helping with the evacuation. Nope. They appeared to have only one goal in mind. And that was to find the boss. Now, Fumi was furious that yeah, they wouldn't stop to help the villagers. So he tells Philo to get her attention by kicking the spear guy and knocking over the other two. Philo End does exactly that. She removes her steel talons and quickly catches up to them. She then sends Mochiyasu flying into the other heroes, including mine, and they all toppled over like bowling pins. Of course, right. watching that happen to mine made him feel extremely good, but it also triggered Mochiyasu, who immediately began screaming in anger. Now, Fumi ignored him and simply glared at Ren and Itsuki with a look of annoyance and disappointment. You see, they were still unsure as to why now Fumi stopped them. In their minds, their top priority was to take care of the monsters. And when yeah, but they you need to, like, to look Fumi, after all the other civilians and stuff. So annoying. The villagers should come first, but they just wouldn't listen. All they wanted to do was to get to the rift because that was linked to the boss. They didn't really have a plan other than to window, locate please, and defeat baby. the boss. Yes. Well, it's you. something that yet again showcases their inability to take the situation seriously. They still saw all of this as a game, and now Fumi knew this too. Thank you. So knowing that he wouldn't be able to change There's construction work going on somewhere the window is open. And asked where their <laughs> My lovely assistant was sorted really that <laughs> The other hero oh. shrugged as if it didn't matter. And Love you. said that they'll Love come later. <laughs> there was, however, a beacon located above their persons. Oh, right. It seemed to be an indication tool that the rest of the soldiers could use to locate the heroes. But that wasn't good enough because it would still take at least a day and a half for the reinforcements to arrive. And by that point, all the damage would have been done already. Now, Fumi then asks why they didn't just teleport with him. And it turns out, none of them actually knew it was even possible. Oh. They weren't aware that the battle formation functionality in their HUD allowed them to lets party them do, up yeah. and bring other soldiers to the wave. 
So he briefly explained to them how it worked, but while doing so, he wondered why they were so misinformed. Seeing that these guys didn't actually know everything about their abilities, or even the wave itself, made Naofumi come to a pretty substantial realization. He saw that when it came to matters about the wave, the higher-ups in the kingdom were just as much in the dark as everyone else. No one including knows. Including Naofumi. You see, <clears throat> initially Naofumi thought that those in the kingdom knew everything there was to know about the waves, and the system behind the summoning and abilities of the heroes. Interesting. He thought that they were intentionally keeping him in the dark to put him at a disadvantage. But seeing how the kingdom couldn't even tell Ren, Itsuki, and Motoyasu how to bring more soldiers to the battle implies that they simply must not know. Wow, yeah, because they, they have no reason to tell them. had read their help menus. Because even though this isn't a video game, there sure are a lot of video game related mechanics, mm -hmm. including a built-in tutorial system that explains a lot of what's going on. Of course, they all reply no, because let's be honest, when's the last time that you read a game's instructions? Yeah. <laughs> it's a key couldn't even be bothered, he just runs off to go and fight. It's true. Ren and Motoyasu, though, were operating under the assumption that they already knew everything that they needed to about the waves. Assuming that they were likely missing some key tidbits of information, now Fumi decides to verify what they know by asking a couple of questions, which is where we learn a bit more on the mechanics of the waves that they've been fighting. This was neither an instant dungeon, nor a time attack type wave like they had thought. The waves were more like a guild war, or a large scale team battle that required significant amounts of cooperation and coordination mm. in order to be handled properly. It wasn't enough to simply run off on your own and attack whatever monster that you came across. No, you needed to bring a large party, a small army even, <laughs> Leroy, and establish their so that a chain of command could be established with you at the top. Essentially, Ren, Itsuki, and Motoyasu all needed to learn how to become guilt leaders. They of course, to... learning that now wasn't possible, yeah, but it was late. knowledge that they needed to gain for the next wave, and it actually seemed like they were listening. Anyway, the wave continues, and we learn that the monsters they're taking on this time are known as interdimensional dark condors, black shadow wolves, goblin assault shadows, and lizard man shadows. These monsters were different from the ones he fought in the first wave. So it made now for me wonder if there were a set of rules that governed how these creatures spawned. Hmm. Something that can really only be found out as we learn more about the waves. As the invasion proceeds, we then come across the old lady who now for me seen from a few episodes. Ass. She's actually a retired level 95 adventurer oh. who turned out to be quite a valuable asset to help defend the village. Although not in the anime, her son was fighting alongside her as well. But he was noted to be nowhere as strong as his mother. Wow. That's when an abnormally big shadow lizard man approached their group. Now Fumi wanted to temporarily retreat. But before he could give the order, the leader of the soldiers in his party charged forward to engage. The lizard man was about to land a clean strike. But that's when the necklace that Now Fumi gave him activated. And it deflected the lizard man's sword, giving the rest of them the opportunity to take the monster down. That's cool. Now Fumi was overjoyed to see that one of his crafted accessories was actually able to save a life because he knew now that learning that skill hadn't been a waste. No. Three more hours go by. I feel like everything he's acquiring and learning has, like, got and reason for point, it. Everyone except for Philo looked visibly exhausted. Also, if you look at Naofumi's HUD in the anime, you can actually see the total duration that the wave has gone Good on time. for in the top right corner. Anyway, they then go to check up on the other heroes, only to find that each hero was trying to take down the boss in their own way. They were each using knowledge from games that they played in the past no, to try to lure out the work boss. together. That's why there was no coordination to be seen when Naofumi went up to the ship. Everyone had their own method of doing it, and refused to believe that there was any other way, simply because it wasn't the way that they knew. To Naofumi, though, it was clear from the constant regeneration of both the Skull Captain and the Tentacles that the real boss was in hiding. So, as we saw, Naofumi uses Raftalia's first light to draw out a bunch of little soul eaters, which then combined to form one big interdimensional soul eater. No attacks seemed to do much damage to it, but Naofumi still came up with a plan to keep it occupied. Philo would use High Quick to continuously kite the enemy and keep it distracted, mm. while Raftalia would keep using first light to prevent the soul eater from going back into hiding. However, even though this strategy would work, it would take much too long for them to completely kill it. So, the only remaining option was to bring out the Shield's Curse series. Yeah. While all this was going on, in the manga, we actually see that Glass was observing their struggle. Oh, the that's time. cool. She was at the very top of the ship, watching the hero's pitiful attempt at... That's so much Zoe. cooler than just having the her appear. The only thing that she was able to conclude from the display was that there weren't any heroes there. At least that was until she saw Naofumi use the Shield of Rage. Ooh. This time it was different, though. Having absorbed the core of the dragon. The Shield of Rage had upgraded itself into the Shield of Rage 2. The equip bonus remained the same. 
However, in addition to the self-burning curse and increased strength effects, he gained some new effects called the Roar of the Raging Dragon and the Frenzy of Companions. Right. The extent of those currently remain unknown, but there was a noticeable difference in the form of his armor and shield. Yeah, There's like a whole clear dragon-like dragon theme scale, yeah. to his armor, and the design on the shield's front now displays subtle elements of the dragon's wings. Mm. You see, as the dragon's anger fueled the Shield of Rage, it changed its form to match the traits of the entity that it absorbed. All while now, Fumi had to witness and experience the moments that gave birth to this rage. If not for Raftalia's intervention, mm. he would have been fully consumed by the hatred and gone on another rampage just like before. Fortunately, her warm touch was able to bring him back to his senses. However, the same couldn't be said for Philo. No. Because she <laughs> ate the zombie dragon's core, when the Shield of Rage activated, she was also exposed to the same feelings that now Fumi was, and she began to indiscriminately attack the enemies around her. So we have a better explanation as to why Philo acted the way she did. Even okay. With those <laughs> combined with now Fumi's self-burning curse, the damage stole wasn't sufficient enough to quickly bring down the Soul Eater. Uh, that's when now Fumi remembered. He still had the Iron Maiden ability to fight with. Mm -hmm. If you remember back when fighting the dragon, he couldn't activate it because he didn't meet the conditions. But this time he decided to give it a go. So, in order to activate the Iron Maiden special ability, he first has to use the Pipe Shield's equip effect, Shield Prism. Right. Then, after that, he must use Chain Shield to switch to one that has a needle weapon form. The final step is to recite the lines that we saw in the anime, and call upon the Iron Maiden. It's essentially a combo move that deals a significant amount of damage, but also drains him of all his skill points, leaving him unable to fight back should the move fail. But fortunately, it worked, and it mm. took down the Soul Eater. Which so leads us now badass. to Glass's dramatic entrance. Now, Fumi's initial thoughts were of her appearance. Considering that Melromark was a typical European middle-aged looking country, he found it strange that this girl was wearing some kimono-type clothing. Mm. It didn't fit the culture of Melromark at all. In fact, to him, she actually looked kind of Japanese, but also ghostly, as if her body was semi-transparent. Regardless, her mere presence was enough to make the situation much more tense. And it's here that we lead ourselves into episode 12, The Raven Invader, covering the rest of chapter 12 of volume 3 in the light novel, and chapters 17 to 18 from the manga. Now, the fight between Glass and Naofumi was portrayed significantly better in the manga. Uh -huh. There were certain moments As that, are most things. <laughs> cut that went into making the fight much more intense. What exactly might those be? Well, let's start from the beginning. It's Glass who charged at Naofumi first, but because he was completely drained of energy, he knew that he was unable to fight back. Luckily, the other three heroes were able to interrupt her charge and briefly shift her focus before quickly getting taken out by her Zero Formation Circle Dance ability, seeing that she had not only destroyed the Soul Eater in one hit, but also just as easily defeated the other three heroes, now Fumi compared her to a video game boss where you had to lose to progress the game. She was just All too right. powerful, but of course, losing in this meant losing your life. Raftalia and Philo were also both noticeably scared, as their feathers and fur stood on end, unsure as to what to expect next from the seemingly undefeatable enemy. Now, Fumi quickly glances around to try to figure out his next steps. He wanted to use Iron Maiden again, but he didn't have the skill points. That was when he noticed that mine had also been knocked out by Glass's attack. Knowing that there must be something in her pockets that he could use, he runs over to loot her body, oh. shocking both Glass and Raftalia, as it put into question his admirable traits as a hero. But that didn't really matter, because there was no you time for chivalry in this battle. Nah. Surviving was the key. In Mind's pocket, he was able to find two potions, oh. one called Magic Water that replenishes any mana used when casting spells, and the other called Soul Healing Water, which recovers skill points after using any skill, something the other heroes must have been using in order to be able to spam their abilities. Soul Healing Water was quite the expensive potion in Melromark, as it apparently also increased your concentration. This would be Naofumi's first time using it. From it, he was able to start using his shield equip bonuses again, and it's at this point that the anime picks up from. We see both Philo and Raftalia attempt to attack, but both fail. That's when Glass retaliates with her Zero Formation Dancing Circle. Naofumi knew it was coming, but was able to reduce the amount of damage that it did by hiding in his own shield prison. However, the damage that did get through was still a lot. It forced him to use a healing ointment, which, thanks to his bonus, also healed Raftalia and Philo due to their proximity to him. Now, Fumi decides that if they were to stand a chance, he'd have to activate the Shield of Rage again. This ended Gonna up initiating go all out. Rage Mode 2, causing her to immediately charge at Glass. In the manga, the charge was quickly parried downward, 
sending Felix oh. flying through all layers of the ship. Oh, wow, well, that's so ground, cool. Leaving her in the state that we see here. And that was just a fraction of Glass's power, making now Fumi well aware of the fact that any direct attack would surely kill in one hit. Seeing that the ship was about to fall apart, Glass decides to jump off and find a better place to fight. Now Fumi had no choice but to follow, and that's when Glass starts fighting for real. She charges at now Fumi, triggering his self-burning curse in the process. But because the flame's damage was dependent on the intensity of Naofumi's rage, it didn't do much damage at all. Uh, Naofumi was in control, and that meant that there wasn't much rage to use his shield. Mm. It didn't matter anyway, though, because Glass had learned his tactic. Seeing that the flames triggered in response to close-range attacks, she figured that all she had to do was attack from a distance. From a range, of course, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't even necessary, since at his current level, everything that he did was pretty much negligible. Even so, having his plans deduced so quickly made Naofumi realize that this boss was different. She was intelligent, both in her techniques and her tactics, almost like she was a bushi from Japan's feudal era. This left Naofumi with one last option, and that was the Iron Maiden. Yet, as we saw, it was yet another futile effort. All hope seemed lost, until Naofumi noticed that the hourglass countdown had changed. There was only 59 seconds left on the clock, so, and Glass realized it too. Run out the All clock. Naofumi had to do now was just avoid getting killed for a minute. Glass saw that they were running, and she looked in shock as Naofumi was subverting the rules of the wave to buy himself more time. Which leads into question, what rules was she even talking about? Mm. Regardless, Naofumi was certain now that these waves were no natural disaster. As the time counts down, Glass approaches a rift in the sky, and before disappearing through it, one shots yet another Soul Eater that was charging at her. But after she was gone, so was the countdown timer. It had just disappeared, as if Glass's presence and the Hourglass were linked it. together. Yeah. But with the wave now over, there were many questions that were plaguing Naofumi's mind. Why were the enemies so much stronger this time? Why was the kingdom and the other heroes not prepared for this? If them and all their knowledge couldn't help them win this time, then how could they win the next time? And finally, what was that countdown at the end and how did it get triggered? These were all questions that Naofumi wanted to know the answer to, but they just couldn't be answered. One thing was made perfectly clear though, Naofumi needed to find a way to class up, otherwise there would be no hope for anyone. Yeah, he needs to be able but to now win. came the time to upgrade himself and his shield. He first unlocked the Shadow Shield from shadowy remains of the lesser monsters. Then he went to the Soul Eater and tried to absorb pieces of it, but found that when trying to pick them up, they would slip right through his hands. Turns out, these monsters didn't have physical bodies. The only way to make contact with them was through something that had magical properties. Oh. So he used a bit of wind magic to pick up the Soul Eater's tail and let the shield absorb it. From it, he gained the Soul Eater's shield with an interesting equip bonus called Second Shield, as well as some Spirit Resistance and Spiritual Attack Resistance. Then the equip effects were known as Soul Eat and SP Recovery. Now, since the shield's name didn't refer to any specific part of the Soul Eater's body, that meant that this was the only shield that could be unlocked from the Soul Eater. Curious as to the properties oh, okay. of this new shield, he tests out what Soul Eat and Second Shield meant. He couldn't quite figure out what Soul Eat did, but he hoped it didn't give him the ability to literally eat souls. Then he tested Second Shield, and found that it let him cast a specific shield's ability twice. So, for example, now he could put up two airstrike shields oh, at the same time. Oh, that's cool, right. There was still plenty of leftover Soul Eater remains to be used, and Naofumi wanted to keep it all. But he knew that the other heroes needed it more, since they weren't nearly as powerful as he had thought. So, he decided to be a little selfless, and he left the rest of the Soul Eater remains for the other three heroes to absorb. Right. A full day then goes by, and the Kingdom soldiers finally show up. Their immediate priority was for the treatment of the other three heroes. Now, Fumi knew this would happen, that they would did. completely disregard the villagers, which is why he spent the entire day before using his compounding abilities to treat the ones that were injured. When these soldiers do finally decide to approach him, that's when they request his presence at the castle. The confrontation with the king is oh, much the same, yes. as are the moments after with the strange woman, who, in the manga, was actually dressed like the queen. But, of oh. course, it wasn't. Yeah. And then we get to the weapon shop owner's place, where they when get all their the new equipment and decide on where to go him. next. Uh. Shield Freedom was the obvious recommendation. Silk Belt was also brought up, but, as it turns out, it's actually a demi-human supremacist kingdom. One where most humans there are turned into slaves. Even if now Fumi was the shield hero, he likely still wouldn't be welcome. When leaving the shop, he's confronted by Melty once again. But he simply disregards what she has to say, and he goes on his way without even giving it a second thought. 
It's during the ride that Raftalia convinces him to give Melty a chance, just to hear out what she has to say, since she did help them out a little while back. Now Fumi reluctantly agrees, and says that if she catches back up to them, then fine, he'll listen to what she has to say. And sure enough, not more than a few moments later, she meets them once again. The final scene here is pretty much as you saw in the anime, right. except rather than saying that the queen will yell at the king, Melty says that the queen will make him pay, implying some sort of more severe punishment, punishment. than simply yelling. Now Fumi couldn't quite figure out what she meant by that, but he just didn't care because he really didn't want to see the king again. The discussion carries on, and uh. that's when we're shown the soldier running towards Melty, bringing us to the end of this episode and the end of this cut content. Now, before I go, I'm thinking of testing out an Attack on Titan type cut content series, so if that's something that you might be interested in, then let me know in the comments below. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao! ciao. Cool. So many weird changes that they make. So bizarre. Some of the stuff is like proper character building as well, I don't get why they cut it out. That bit where Philo gets thrown through the bloody boat is so cool. Instead, just get knocked down anime, but yeah. So yeah, I'll carry on with these. I think there's like ten of them at the moment. So like every, well, I don't know. I'll put them out regularly. <laughs> so thank you guys very much for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch and discuss in future videos. And I'll see you guys. It's all you guys. Next time.